Hello everyone, today we are doing a propane conversion on our Honda EU2200i inverter generator so that we can run this off of this. One of the reasons we're doing this propane conversion is because as RVers we always have propane on hand. Our refrigerator, our stove, and our furnace all run off of propane, whereas the only thing that uses gasoline is our generator. Our truck is a diesel truck, so if we can just go without carrying gasoline around, that'd be great. Another reason is that propane never goes stale unlike gasoline. Any amount of gasoline we buy, we have to put fuel stabilizer in it because we run our generator so infrequently. And as Hank Hill would say, another reason is that propane is a much cleaner burning fuel, which means that it'll lead to fewer deposit buildup build up in the engine, including the carburetor, and also the exhaust from burning propane is a lot less toxic. The conversion kit we've chosen to go with is by a company called Hutch Mountain, and it's their tri-fuel conversion kit. And tri-fuel meaning that you can actually also run this off of natural gas, but we're not going to be taking advantage of that. But for those of you that are interested, it does do that too. One of the reasons we went with this conversion kit is because it's OEM quality, which means that if you were to purchase this generator after this kit was already installed, I'd highly doubt you'd be able to tell that Honda didn't do this installation themselves. Also, there are no permanent modifications you have to make to this engine. The only modification you have to make is a small hole drilled through this plastic casing for the propane tube. Another reason is that you can switch between propane and gasoline at any point in time. You're not forced into sticking with only propane once you do the conversion. Also, everything you need to do this conversion is included in the kit that they send you, except for, you know, some tools like drills and wrenches and stuff. They've even gone as far as including a single zip tie because at some point in time in the instructions, you have to zip tie a hose out of the way. So they don't even make you buy a whole pack of zip ties for this conversion. It's pretty great. If you're interested in doing this conversion on your Honda 2200 or Honda 2000 generator as well, we spoke with Hutch Mountain and were able to get you a $25 off promo code for your purchase of this conversion kit. If you go to their website and use promo code FATE, F-A-T-E, at checkout, you'll get that $25 off. But let's get into this conversion, except that David is going to take over. Me. Because it's his job, not mine. I'm going to go to the store. Yeah, Have fun. get out of here. All right, so the tools that you'll need to do this conversion are a power drill, a pilot bit, a step drill bit, a Phillips screwdriver, a socket wrench with an 8 millimeter bit, a 16 millimeter or 5 8 wrench, two crescent wrenches, and a roll of tape. Now Hutch Mountain has included some excellent step-by-step -step instructions with pictures that I'm going to be following for this install. And the first step is to remove this front engine cover. Next, we'll want to take a piece of tape and line one edge of it up with the edge of this air cleaner right here and tape it to this top part of the plastic case of the generator. And we're doing that because the instructions tell us to take one of the enclosed washers and line up this inside circle edge right with this air cleaner. And the tape just makes that easier. And then have this outside ring about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the case right here. So once we've got that set up, we'll want to take a marker and just mark the inside circle, or the center, I mean, of that washer, just like that. Then we'll be drilling our pilot hole right into the center of that mark we made. And then using our step drill, we'll want to increase the size of this hole to 9 sixteenths of an inch. And next we need to remove this air filter cover here. Then we need to pull out the pre-filter here. And then using our eight millimeter socket, we can remove these three. And then this hose needs to be removed from the back here. So just pull that out. and then the entire air filter assembly can be removed. And now we're ready to install our propane fuel line. We need to route this fitting behind these gas lines here and then place one of the metal 
washers that were provided on that fitting and then route the fitting up through the hole that we just drilled and then place the second metal washer on top of that fitting. Then we need to place this elbow onto this fitting. So go ahead and thread it on by hand. While using our wrench to hold the fitting down below, we can then tighten this elbow up with a crescent wrench. And then using two crescent wrenches, go ahead and install the male quick connect on the front of that elbow. Now we want to ensure that this propane line is ran behind these pink hoses, just so it gives a better fit. And then at the carburetor, we need to pull off the old gasket, dispose of that, and replace it with one of the new gaskets provided in the kit. And then slip on our propane fitting. And then place in front of that another one of the new gaskets that were provided with the kit. And then back on the other side of the propane line, we want to take our zip tie and tie this gasoline line together with the propane line. And we wanna make sure that our zip tie stays on the right side of this hose clamp right here to avoid pinching the gasoline line. Next, using this small nylon spacer that was provided with the kit, we will take our air cleaner assembly We'll put this bolt back in through that hole and then that small nylon spacer will go on the back side of that bolt. And then we can replace our air cleaner assembly and it's easier if you kind of get this air breather right here back into place first. And then if we line these two holes up with the studs, we can then get this bolt to line up and hand tighten that in first so that it just kind of holds everything in place. With the added thickness behind this air cleaner, these studs are now kind of flush. So you kind of have to push sort of hard to be able to get this nut on the left started. But it'll bite and then you can get the other nut started. <coughs> And we'll kind of thread these in by hand first. Then we can tighten these down. And the factory spec is 22 inch pounds, so you don't really want to go too nuts. And once you're done, you'll see that the stud is only about halfway engaged through the threads of the nuts. And I spoke to Hutch Mountain and they said that's perfectly fine. It's not a problem at all, but if it makes you feel good, then you can apply Loctite to these so that, you know, they for sure won't vibrate loose, but I'm not worried about it at all. Then we can put our pre-filter back in. And then replace the air filter cover. and then the front cover can be replaced. And then we need to peel off this factory sticker. You may want to use a hair dryer to loosen up the adhesive, but our generator is new enough that I think it'll just peel right off. and then clean off that area for the new sticker with some rubbing alcohol. Just get off any old adhesive that may be left behind. And then apply Hutch Mountain's sticker 
that includes the propane on off. And I think they did a really good job with this sticker. It still has the OEM style to it. I think they stayed true to the Honda design. Looks really nice. And that's it, the install is finished. Very easy and very straightforward. But before we can run this generator off propane, we need to burn out all of the residual gas that's still in the carburetor. And to do that, we'll first turn our generator on and choke it on so that we can fire it up Turn the choke off and then switch the generator down to this uh, gasoline shutoff setting slash propane setting. And what that does is it cuts fuel from being supplied to the carburetor. Um, sorry, when I say fuel, I mean gasoline. It cuts gasoline from being supplied to the carburetor so that the engine will then continue to run until all of that gasoline is consumed and then it will die by running out of fuel. Then we can run it off of propane. So. Go ahead and turn it on first. Fire it up. And then switch it down. And now we're ready to run off of propane. So we can take our regulator and connect it to our propane tank. And the directions state that the regulator needs to be pointing up like so. And then we can take this quick connect and connect it to our generator. And then we can open the gas valve on the tank. And then the priming button needs to be held for a half second. Make sure our generator is switched to LP gas slash NG. Choke is off. You never need choke on when running off of the uh, propane. And then see if she'll start. And the instructions also recommend by, to shut off the generator when it's running off of propane to do exactly what I just did. Close the propane valve on the tank and then shut the generator off just to run out all the propane that's in the lines. And I have to say, while this generator is running off of propane, the exhaust was almost completely odorless. That is fantastic because you guys know, these things running off of gasoline, the exhaust fumes are, ugh. Especially if the wind is carrying it toward the uh, trailer, it can get pretty bad, so that is awesome. And that's basically it for this install video. I just have to reiterate how great of a job that Hutch Mountain did in making their uh, propane conversion kit super easy and quick to install. And I'm just so happy now that we have the option to run off of propane or gas, depending on you know whatever we wanna do. Yeah, it's. It's really cool that we can run this off of propane now, and I think that we should probably get a couple bigger propane tanks. Oh yeah, definitely. Just get rid of the gasoline, not even worry about it anymore. And I gotta say, so I was inside the trailer when David was running this off of both gasoline and then propane, and the wind was blowing directly at the trailer <laughs> from the generator, and when he was running it off of gasoline, it was like choking me out, like I even told him, like, that stinks! <laughs> <laughs> And then he switched it to propane and I couldn't smell anything. Yeah. That was really cool. I know, I was blown away with yeah. how just little exhaust fumes w could be detected from burning up the propane. The gas on the other hand, yeah, it's just it's chokingly awful. toxic. Gross. Yeah, <laughs> but if you guys are interested in uh, running your RV's air conditioner off of one of these small 2200 watt generators, Hutch Mountain also sells what's called the Microair Easy Start 364, and what it basically does is it aids in supplying startup amperage to the air conditioner so that one of these smaller generators can still start your air conditioner, and it makes it so you just don't have to buy a much larger generator 
or buy another one of these to run in parallel and I'll actually save you a bunch of money. So if you're interested in that, we actually made a video on that. You can go ahead and check out that install video up there. Uh, and we have a promo code for that through Hutch Mountain as well. Uh, it is FATE as well. So just one promo code for this tri-fuel kit as well as the Easy Start. Same promo code, F-A-T-E. It'll save you $25 off of the Easy Start and an additional $25 off of this propane conversion kit. But uh, that's basically all we have for you. All those links to Hutch Mountain's website will be in the description below. And yeah, see you guys later. Bye. Bye.